Into the crack house. 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 Hello, this is Mini Said Three. I'm your host, Fritz. Joined as always by co host, Band Daddy. Hi. Kaz. When I started this. Angela. Hola. Nick Spry. What up? I have something very important to talk about. What? Have you guys ever wondered if there's uh, intelligent life out there, other than, of course, humans, because we're so smart? <laughs> uh, dolphins. Uh, dolphins crow- are very smart. Crows, so crows, crows yeah. also. Uh, Chimpanzees. Certain type of flounder mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. here. Some flowers. Really? Oct- yeah, I mean, they Octopi. gave Octopi. 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 Yeah. Very, very smart. smart. And their very DNA smart. is not of this earth. They're yeah. part of their DNA. The scientists are like... Yeah, it's amazing. It, it's a damn shame they're so delicious. Oh, <laughs> they I know. So good. See, because really of that, are. I cannot, I cannot convince myself to eat octopus sushi. Uh, but anyway, that's to that's another fair. topic yeah. and another uh, podcast. I will let you know right now that the United Kingdom's government is going to release a secret dossier Ooh. of all British UFO sightings after the election. Next month, which is in June, but will probably be July. When I say all, I mean up until 1970. Wow. Oh, wow. So that could be some important stuff, hopefully. Yeah. Why? Absolutely dribble. Why now? Well, uh, Angela, I'm glad that you asked. Uh, <laughs> they did a news blog on Frontier Science and the Paranormal uh, recently reported that the secret dossier will reveal... Previously unpublished reports of UFO activity spanning 50 years. So here's the thing. They wanted to release this back in March. Okay. I don't know why, but they wanted to release everything by March. They couldn't. Maybe servers crashed. You know, things happen. Hackers, right? Um, These files will probably be heavily redacted um, if they're not just all out, just crossed through and scribbled onto. But (laughs) at the same time. Crayon. This could be another government's attempt of saying, okay, look, this is all we have, and just not giving anything. Mm-hmm. It's like the tip I, of the iceberg. Like this will shut right. you up for a while kind of thing. Exactly. Right, yeah. I think that's exactly what's going to happen. A little so, distraction. So to end, um, and this is... Uh, but first I have a question. What's the difference? Sure. What makes a dossier more important than a file? Dude, when is I a was file just a going to ask that. Isn't it a bunch of files? It's a whole... It's like... But I see more file, than one file in a file. Right, I put that file, file in the file cabinet. a combination right, of right, documents. Like if you had a, a, a wide-ranging subject that had many files, that would be... A dossier would be but like what a if you have a, In right. a file cabinet, you have just a bunch of files. Sometimes like eight files shoved in that one file. Like, you know, it's, you know here's Linda such and such. Right. And then there's eight files in there. So is that now a dossier? I feel like maybe it's... When it's when it's produced to, like I think you, you know, guys are overthinking this. Yeah, I think, yeah. Well, no, it yeah. really bugged me. I, don't know. <laughs> I thought I thought the exact same thing. I was like, when at what point does a document become a dossier? Right. I mean, yeah. we can we can do this li- hopefully all night it's long. When you clean it up and you got to send it to your boss. Like you just like, what is this? A fucking I just file? want, like, the, I want the dossier. Then, <laughs> and then what is it? Portfolio. Yeah. yeah. I just I just want to end a with collection this. of dossiers. Um, a former UFO investigator told the Daily Mail. Quote, there's no smoking gun in these files that will that will confirm the existence of aliens. All right. But there are plenty of fascinating UFO reports and policy documents, which is always interesting. So <laughs> these really are the real life X files, unquote, and I embellish there a tad. Oh. But that's mm-hmm. it. Mm. it. Sounds pretty boring. It's, yeah, it just, it yeah. just sounds like they're just like it's sounds just like something to shut people up, and it's not going to have any information because there wasn't good uh, data gathering uh, apparatus out there. It's going to be a total yank job, <laughs> oh. a governmental yank job. Yeah, be a to put the scientific term on it, it's going to be a total yank <laughs> job. <laughs> Nick Spry, do you have a spooky word substitute of the week? Yeah, since we're squabbling about semantics, let's get in some words. I love nice. it. Nice! Oh. Yeah. Squabbling about semantics. Give yeah, there guy. you go. In right. band here. This week's spooky word of the week to expand your spooky vocabulary uh, is the word eldritch. E L D R I T C H. Nice. Eldritch. It's a very metal word. Yeah. T T C H? Yeah. L- like huh. dr- Eldritch. Eldritch. R I T C H. Eldritch. Eldritch. Yes, and, and it means, of course, weird or eerie, which was a previous spooky word. Uh, and it's been um, dated around maybe 500 years old, a little bit older than that. Around 1508 was one of the first printed usages of the word. Uh, That's not very old. It comes from Middle English, elf rich, which uh, means fairyland. Like, I, oh. yo, oh, yeah. elf rich. I was about to say no. this. Elf rich. <laughs> oh, so many elves in my own. Elf rich. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Yes. Right. Uh, 
one of the most famous uses of the word would be a uh, from Robert Louis Stevenson uh, in the the book Kidnapped. Uh, the quote was: "The curse on him and his house, buyer and stable, man, guest and master, wife, miss or baron, black, black be their fall." The woman whose voice had risen to a kind of eldritch sing song turned with a skip and was gone. Wow! Oh, whoa. <laughs> turned so with that a was skip and was gone. That was kind of my understanding of the of the word eldritch was that it, it kind of evoked like a mysterious ancient forest kind of thing like land of this like swampy like elves i think yes is yeah, that a lord yeah. of the rings thing it might be like a lord well, of the rings where thing? the hobbits got lost in that one what is that one forest they get lost in oh god central park yeah exactly. yes perfect <laughs> yeah. right by like the alice in wonderland statue right, right. yeah right yeah, there right in right the there. brambles we, we, we. yeah we reached that's what I meant with Boba Fett. <laughs> Once we reached Strawberry Obviously. Fields, we were lost forever. So that's interesting. Cool. So okay, is there is there more about the uh... about the word Eldritch? Um, not not really. <laughs> <laughs> All right. But just, I never thought about swampy. As I, I always just just thought ancient, ancient you know, foresty. Dust, I, always, I, thought, I thought more castle dusty. You know, yeah, well, from the crypt. Right. But you also have to think the that Eldritch like, crypt uh, of the elders. Yeah, yeah. Five hundred years ago, the fairies spooky. weren't necessarily what we think of them today. They were generally had a very dark. <laughs> dark uh, association to them. They would steal children and yeah. always... Oh, yeah. you know, they like, still do. No cross. way. Yeah. yeah. I mean, nobody's no perfect. No, no one's perfect, Angela. That's correct. <laughs> Pardon me? No one is perfect. Fairies are definitely an evil thing for a while. Also, they rode <laughs> corgis in Wales. Did you know that? I like how we're just conclusively... They, wait, well, what? no, fairies are evil, but also... No, no, no. They, <laughs> we all know that fact. They rode so corgis, which is like the cutest thing in the they, world. Fairies rode on corgis yeah, in Wales? In, in Wales. In Wales. In Wales. In, on top of Wales. Inside of a whale. Inside, Inside of a whale. In the country, <laughs> corgis. In the country of Wales. <laughs> to me. There's a country entirely composed of whales that have corgis inside of them. one whale. Riding fairies on top of them. Yes. One oh whale. My the whole God, country's on its back. That's amazing. That sounds so cool. And that's your word of the day. Well, thank you, Nick Brian. Thanks, Thank you, Nicely Nick. done. Eldritch. Eldritch. Which means riding on a corpse whale. <laughs> Inside of a corpse whale on top of a corgi. Wearing yeah. a macaroni hat. Yeah. <laughs> It actually clear, just sounds like an elf's name, actually. Right, yeah, yeah. 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 Eldritch. I feel like that's sort of like maybe the Fey version of like showbiz pizza or something like that. Like, Ooh, let's go inside the whale, Dad. It's Mustang's birthday. We're going to ride that corgi and go in the ball pit. That sounds way more tickets. excellent than Chuck E. Cheese or showbiz yeah, pizza. Way better. Yeah, I'm, I'm right, way more so in on that. Here's a Walmart cell phone. Just don't, don't <laughs> ramble too far, all right? Just call that a burner. <laughs> <laughs> because the wire. <laughs> Very Eldritchy. Mm. El- Eldr- I feel Eldritch. 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 Now, Kaz, do you uh, got anything from the world of spooky entertainment? I do. I do. There's some stuff going on. So, um, did you guys ever see a movie called The Fist of Jesus? I actually think I did see that movie. So, it was kind of a spoofy yeah. uh, horror comedy movie that uh, basically asked the question. What if the resurrection of Lazarus had accidentally turned him into a flesh-eating zombie and Jesus had to <laughs> defeat him? Wow. And, yeah. So the makers of the movie, uh, David Munoz and Adrian Cardona, are making a new movie called Once Upon a Time in Jerusalem. <laughs> oh, <God>. uh, <laughs> The, the t- <laughs> it's like it's like Once Upon a Time in America. Exactly. You know, yeah. with like De Niro and uh, was it Ed Wood? Uh, Not Ed was, Wood. Uh, Ed, Ed, Ed Norton. Ed, yeah, Ed, no. No. Uh, Ed, uh, Ed Gein. Something I was thinking more of a Once Upon a Time in Mexico, like yeah, Antonio yeah, Banderas. Like, which did you ever see the original uh, El Mariachi? El Mariachi? Hell oh, yeah, amazing! Great you know film. what? I, I I looked at an interview from uh, Robert Rodriguez about that, and he said that they shot it for $11, the equivalent of like yeah, like ten thousand bucks, oh, yeah. Yeah. and it was like uh, great. It was uh, great. That movie was fantastic. Anyway, so awesome. uh, Once Upon a Time in Jerusalem. I'm sorry. The description for this says, uh, we'll follow the adventures of Jesus and Judas in a world inhabited by zombies, demons, cowboys, Roman soldiers, mutants, post-apocalyptic punks, and all kinds of critters. What else do you need? It's a uh, buddy road movie. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. It's like the Blues Brothers, but with Jesus and Jesus. But with Jesus. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) In ancient Jerusalem. Oh, my. It's basically like Tommy Boy or like Black Sheep or... Oh, uh, yeah. This is like it's like a it's new like age trauma. Boy. It's like trauma taken to the next level. Judas, don't put your M and M's on there. Oh, 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 God. oh Judas. sorry, Jesus. That guy <laughs> in, in a little, little robe. <laughs> uh, a couple of your uh, favorite uh, horror movie or horror TV shows are also getting sort of box set uh, treatment. Uh, they're getting all the Tales of the Crypt together, so you can get a uh, box set of Tales of the Crypt. So Very nice. Cool. That's cool. 
I'm glad to see Kellyanne Conaway is getting some more work. Uh, oh, 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 daddy. <laughs> Brown. That's Man Daddy at Fort Fritz. <laughs> GFY. <laughs> oh, your hate mail. Uh, I'm, I'm sure I've referenced it before because I'm obsessed with the series, but the Dark Tower uh, movie is coming out. And yeah. um, fans of the book series will probably know that note that there are some notable absences and actually just read an interview uh, with uh, a horror movie website. Well, uh, Dark Tower was written by Stephen King. Mr. Stephen King. Yes. No, yeah. Mr. Stephen King. He should be King. like knighted. We should have a United States equivalent of knighting. Oh, yeah. yeah. He is a knights. national treasure. A patriot. We, we dub him a patriot. A patriot. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. So we're the, patriot corn- laureate. Wear this cornucopia of freedom on your head. Exactly. <laughs> So, uh, Dark Placed Tower, by a bald eagle. Dark Tower was a three novel. Oh, it, was a, it was a seven novel series. Whoa. And he yeah. actually uh, wrote an eighth uh, novel to go kind of in the middle of it after it was all done. Give you a little extra sort of fan service. And as as a fan of Stephen King throughout the ages, this is his opus. This is the greatest Stephen King story you will read. Read it. If you're a fan of him, read it. And go see the movie because I'm I'm extremely excited. I'm gonna nerd out. I might like dress up or something. Yeah. Like, I'm, I'm, that, you I'm that nerded out about it. I've always been a huge fan of uh Stephen King. I was like young when I saw like the the T V remaking of The Shining, but it was close to the book. Yeah, you talking about the sci fi one? Uh, with, uh, the one the with, the with, the with the guy from the guy from Wings. Yeah, yes. from Wings, way more. Yes. Yes. The fact that yeah. you were a kid yeah. when that happened kills I've, me. I've got that on uh, DVD. I've got that on DVD. It. It's absolutely fascinating. Uh CGI is a little rough, but when you look at it from a historical perspective, it's really much, it's pretty much the entire novel. So Absolutely. Yeah. Exactly. I read The Shining. Yeah. And the entire book was what they portrayed right. in like three 90 minute segments. So that was something. What year was that again? 97, I think. 97. Yeah, 97. It was in the 90s okay. when it came out. Uh, that was like the, the sort of key discussion point when you're talking about Stephen King movies is the Kubrick Shining is so atmospheric and so creepy, but it's not the story of The Shining. Not at all. And then they put out kind of a hokey sci-fi channel version of it, which is way more true to the book. And and I'd say they're kind of on par with each other. You get like the artistic direction of this director who wanted to kind of make it his own thing, and then someone went over and did it more true to the book. Oh, I I, I mean, there's been so many books that that's been done with, especially sci-fi and horror. Like uh, I just was rereading Dune by Frank Herbert. Nice. Yes. Like, when yeah. David Lynch made the feature film, like a lot it got panned, but uh like there was the documentary Jodorowsky's Dune oh. if he had made uh that movie would have been <sighs> incredible. Jodorowsky. Although I rewatched <sighs> David Lynch's version. I as such a huge fan. It's pretty good. Which it's pretty which uh, the like extremely long one because there is like a three hour plus. I no, think, it, cut. it was like a two hour and twenty minute cut. Because the, the, the three hour one, I've, I'm pretty sure I've seen it. Because I mean, I've read Dune like at least three times now. That's and, I've read all five books at least yeah, three. Or I've, four read, times. I've read the, the whole series twice, but D- Dune itself three times just because. I read all thirty four books at least twenty five times. Oh, Sixteen wow. of those. That's a lot of books. Wow, that's a lot what of letters. I, say? I hate. Do you know math. how to do math? <laughs> yeah, math is terrible. I hate math. So yeah, that's my spooky news of the of the week. Nice, Beautiful. Very nice, Great. nicely done. Well, uh, what I bring is uh, something uh, in the uh, paranormal news situation. You don't say. Yes, I do, and I got something a little interesting. Some uh, British athletes that are right now competing on basically it's like. Uh, Dancing with the stars, but with skiing. Okay. Because what? that's how stupid we've gotten as a society. Is that it's Sounds basically way more dangerous than dancing Whoa, with the stars. That, I'm intrigued. It's, it's right? called the jump. And so <laughs> it's just taking Whoa, okay. British Wait, stars oh that shouldn't be doing it, just throwing them throwing down. Throwing them down a ski ramp? Yeah, yes. throwing them down a ski ramp and see what happens. And uh, one of them is British Paralympian Kadena Cox. Okay. Uh, and uh, she is uh, missing an arm. Okay. Okay. And then a retired rugby star, Gareth Thomas. That's such a rugby sounding name, oh, Gareth. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And uh, they're competing on the jump. And uh, what, in the, one of the things that's become interesting is that one of them is saying that uh, they're, they've been violated by a spirit in their hotel room. What? Yeah, I did um, not expect that. Yeah, yeah no. No, this took a wait, wait. wait. Yeah. I'm, I'm, still, I'm still confused. Are they right. dancing? There's so on many wait, things. Is it water skiing or snow skiing? Snow, snow skiing. Snow skiing. So okay. like going down the big jump, I guess would be like the final episode. Is like you get to go down the big real ski that jump. That's very I'm just dangerous. Guessing. 
it just, I mean, I, I just, reality shows in general is like, come on, we have some of the best written TV now. Can we just move on past this? But, um, so my, my favorite part about this story, and I got this from HuffPo. Mm-hmm. I just want to oh, yeah. uh, give it. I, I hate the new setup of it, of Huffington Post. I mean, it's a liberal rag, but at least it looked more like a newspaper before. Now it looks closer it's to just BuzzFeed. Yeah. The name yeah. keeps getting shorter and shorter. Yeah. Welcome yeah. to <laughs> So, <laughs> wait, full disclosure. Uh, go ahead, Nick. So, there's a ghost, ghost boning, mo- boffing, people. molesting. Yeah, uh, this is this is my favorite part. Is that another competing celebrity, Emmy uh, Emma Parker Bowles, the Duchess of Cornwall's niece, Whoa. which is my favorite oh, celebrity. Yeah. Of Cornwall. Nice. Said on the show that Cox was penetrated by some sort of paranormal entity, and then uh, Thomas said she quote she had a ghost going in and out of her. She had a sleep thing. She wishes it were a person. It was going in and out of her body. What the hell? What's a sleep thing? She was asleep and she had a ghost doing her. Yeah. She had a little sleep thing. But was it like expressly sexual or was it? It was going in and out of her body. I can let you guess what part of her body it was going in and out of. But do they say that in the story? I'm pretty sure it's inferred. Uh, okay. because implied, yeah, implied. You were, me. I, you I was inferring implied. implied. <laughs> Suck it, nerd. <laughs> <laughs> but so, uh, she asked to move to a different uh, floor, uh, after hearing about the ghost penetration. So, everybody was trying to get off that floor. <laughs> just to, like you're not yeah. gonna leave the hotel, you're like, eh, it's just this room, just switch up the floor, yeah. you know, that's except, fine. Except Roddy decided to hang out and have a good time. Yeah, ghosts can't uh, use stairs or elevators, you'd be fine. They're I'm stuck gonna need on the uh, bumped up to the they didn't seem to use elevators, that's right. They always seem to chase people into the Elisa Lamb thing, he had to yeah. like coax her out of the uh, out of the door. But one thing I didn't realize from the story that it brought up is that Bobby Brown, in his autobiography, claims he had a, a sex had uh, had sex with a ghost, he, or a ghost had sex with in him. the same place, oh. or just like no, in a different place, just in his life. I just never knew that Bobby Brown got boned by a ghost or, of or boned he a ghost. Did. You talk about Whitney? Uh, no, he says I wasn't. He says oh, I wasn't high man. and I was not well, tripping. Not it, I soon-ish. think it was just a cloud of cocaine. <laughs> Kesha claims to have had sex with a ghost too, and who who wouldn't believe anything Kesha says? I mean, she brushes her teeth with a bottle of Jack. Come on. I, lo- I love her for that. Yeah. I really do. No, I, lo- I love I love her for that. But that's what I got in uh, Paranormal News. And the creepiest thing is that people are still watching reality TV. That's beautiful and also terrifying. Thank you for that. Truth. Uh, let's now end it with uh, Angela. Well, I think the big elephant in the room is the reboot of Twin Peaks. Oh, yeah. 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 Yes. <laughs> yes. Started in 1990 on ABC. Mm-hmm. Loved his coffee and pie. <laughs> Jesus, is it that long? Yeah. 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 1990? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's been a while. Yeah, just I, look at Sherilyn Finn now and then, and you'll say, oh, wow, that was a long time. So I, I guess feel like the, the like, show was sort of, like, disjointed from uh, a time signature. Right. It's always been, yeah. yeah, like, that's like, like a lot the, of Lynch's stuff is sort of... Uh, right. That's, that's David Lynch. Yeah, it's yeah. on frame. I always got the impression when I was watching Twin Peaks specifically and, and other David Lynch stuff is that there's no real dialogue happening. It's, like, characters just delivering lines in a void, and everyone's kind of, like... This dreamlike quality of people just talking and people talking back, and it's not—it's that's kind of what I got from it. Is yeah, like, I feel like every true. episode should end with a bunch of beatniks just being like, "Yeah, it's very—it's <laughs> avant-garde dialogue." You know what I mean? Oh, someone out there is fuming right now. Yeah. Uh, of course. So, is there any uh, update to this? Is it so? I guess Showtime is mm-hmm. where it's going to be rebooted on. Good on Showtime. Mm-hmm. And um, I guess there's like four episodes out there, and mm-hmm. I guess David Lynch is going to be involved in okay. some of these episodes. Yeah, I'm not sure if he's directing all of them. Yeah. Because uh, yeah. like, the original run, he only directed like six right. or something that's a, like that. It's a pretty episodes. tough schedule to maintain yeah, exactly. a whole season of a show. Yeah, especially right. when you're completely he's insane. He is executive producer on all of those. My, my favorite David Lynch quote was a, a guy was having an interview with him in like a diner. And and David Lynch just like pointed at a guy across the diner and said, "See that guy?" And the guy was just pulling apart uh, a cinnamon roll and eating it. He's like, "That's just normal." But what if that was a human kidney? <laughs> it's like, that's very why would you even consider yeah. that? Yeah. That's very David Lynch. <laughs> okay, I mean, that's, you've got way too much extra mental time if you want to put that into your mental scope of the world. Yeah, that's when you look at him and you go, "Check, please." If you ever need, to, <laughs> if you ever need to talk, man, right? <laughs> just let me know. It sounds like a you. red flag. Eraserhead was amazing, though. I mean, did you oh, guys? Come on. Sure. Yeah, that's like yes. classic, right? Yeah, Eraserhead is. Fire, I liked absolutely. Firewalk with me. I mean, uh, I Blue, Velvet. Blue Velvet. Magnolia. Blue Velvet is Blue amazing. Blue Velvet is amazing. Incredible. And I would be remiss if if I uh, omitted Blue Velvet because that movie is absolutely incredible. Wait, did How, he do Elephant Man? 
He did. He Elephant did. That was probably his most mainstream. The most depressing movie ever made. If you're not crying at the end of the Elephant Man, you are dead inside. Well, I mean, you know the story. It's not exactly a great one. Oh, yeah. Also, uh, Dune, didn't he? Did he, he did. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Dune. Man, I, I, mean, I still haven't seen that. It's, it's, it's very different from the book. Uh, in a lot of ways, some of the things it gets really well. I do not like the adding of the voice as a weapon. It's not yeah, even close to what the voice is. There's a lot of production qualities. Yeah. Like you think about the scope and the scale of the movie, and then you there's like really cheesy. Like they wouldn't just spend so much money on costumes and thing and sets, and oh, then they have like, really which are really amazing, terrible like, and, 3D early uh, 3D animation. Real bad, yeah. The best thing about the Dune movie is you get to see Sting in bat wing skivvies like you've never seen. Before. <laughs> that is true. That right there, that's, that's, that's worth the price of admission. That's awesome. All right, well, fall back in love with Cooper and the death of Laura Palmer. Yeah. There you go. Beautiful. <laughs> fall back in love. Fall back in love. <laughs> with the murder. <laughs> also, Kyle McLaughlin. On that note, that's the end of Minnesota right there. That's Minnesota number three. We do something completely different on Fort Fritz. This is just us doing the typical thing where you sit around and talk about stuff. Update you on what's going on in the world of spooky crap. So this is Fort Fritz, Minnesota <laughs> three. Also, check us out on social media. You can check us out at Fort Fritz MCT on the Twitter. Uh, you can find mm-hmm. us on Facebook just by looking at at Fort Fritz, and we'll yep. pop up on our Facebook feed. Super simple. And we're all over the place, so many different ways. And uh, what's the phone number, Fritz, if they want to call in? That'd be 570-478-3789. And a very fancy way to remember that is 570. Go ahead and save it into your phone. I'll wait. 570-4-R-T-F-R-T-Z. Wow, that's a horrible way to remember a number, exactly. Fritz. Thank you. Thanks. So that's us at the Minisode. This is Minisode 3. You're listening to Fort Fritz. Check out the regular episodes available on Stitcher and iTunes and all the things you're listening on right now. This is Fort Fritz, Minisode 3. Thanks for listening. Bye.